that changed? Yeah, we just got to take care of the football. You know, I think we did some good things up in New England. Obviously, ran the ball extremely well, um, but the turnovers killed us. You know, didn't finish in the red zone, and then you know gave the ball up too many times. So, um, something's obviously a big emphasis for us as we move forward. You guys have had a lot of success in the first game after a bye since since Mike got here, and you know since since your tenure here. Why why do you think that is? What, what do you think maybe you guys are doing to kind of gear up? You know, in, in the first game after kind of the time off. Uh, I don't know if it's anything special we're doing, but I know that um, guys are excited to get going again. Uh, like I said, you know, mentally refreshed, physically refreshed, and excited to get playing. You know, have a huge stretch here coming up to finish the regular season, and we're excited for the opportunity. Where it feels like it felt like it took a really long time to get there, but now when you look at what's ahead, like hey, maybe this this timing's going to work out okay. Yeah, I think it's definitely the latest buy I've ever had in my career, and um, felt like it took a while to get here. But now, as as we're here and we're looking forward, you know, it gave us a chance to heal up late in the season. And like I said, mentally and physically refresh and and build some excitement as we finish this this regular season. You didn't, didn't finish. You know, the way you wanted to with two straight losses, but you like the position you're in, kind of moving forward, and, and you kind of feel that energy in the locker room? Yeah, no, that obviously didn't play our best football, um, you know, leading up to the bye. But as we look back, we, we've put ourselves in a position where um, everything we wanted is still in front of us. So it's just a matter of, of going out, executing, playing good football um, as, we, as we finish down the stretch. Said the season is just getting started, and, and it, it's so key for teams to be playing their best in December. Did he talk to you guys about that season just getting started, and kind of the turning point after this break? Yeah, I mean, it doesn't really matter what you've done up to this point. You have to be able to play your best football December and January. You know, so um, that's what we're looking to do. We're looking to come out and improve on a daily basis and play our best football. You know, starting with Jacksonville this week. And just getting back to the basics and fundamentals, I mean, how key is that? And just picking up maybe practice in terms of speed um, now that you guys have got to the bye week and are past it. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, it all starts with fundamentals, with technique and fundamentals, um, one of the pillars of our program and uh, something we emphasized on Monday and we'll, we'll do it again today as we, as we pick up practice again. Um, something we believe in, we preach a lot, and really football games are, are won and lost in large part due to that. So uh, I think guys are excited to, to get back to work, and uh, we'll do that today. What's it like being trying to get on the same page with a guy like Golden Tate, who's been around the league, knows a lot of different systems, but you know maybe doesn't have the familiarity with you that in terms of quarterback and receiver? Yeah, we're building that relationship. You know, throw through with him a little bit leading up to the New England game during practice. You know, he's over during all the special teams periods and stuff like that. Um, and as, as he learns the offense more and gets deeper in our playbook, um, you know, we'll be able to, to get more and more reps as the practice days go on. How much is your maybe Julio back in the mix, and, and how quickly can you guys kind of pick up where you left off? Yeah, excited to get Julio back. Um, you know, have to, have to uh, build on, on things we've done in the past. Like you mentioned, it's been a little while since we've thrown and caught together. So uh, these practice reps will be huge. We, we got some reps on Monday, which was nice. Excited to see him back out there. You know, making plays and uh, and looking good running. So, um, yeah, like like I mentioned, excited to have him back. Last time, Ryan, before Julio got hurt last time, um, did you feel like you had gotten to a certain point with him that you were hoping to get to this year, in terms of the chemistry and just? I think we've had spurts. We've had spurts. You know, I think that uh, it's been a frustrating year for him. Just kind of the up and down of of being injured and, and not being. I don't speak for him. I'll let him answer that question, but. Um, I can imagine if I was in that, that position, it'd be quite frustrating. So, um, hoping to uh, to keep him healthy as the as the season goes on and um, and build that consistency. The more time we get together. Does Scream maybe have as many moving parts as anything you do, and how much has gone into getting where you guys are with the discipline? That's a pretty good play. What was the first part? Of that? I'm sorry. The screen game. Yes, maybe have as many moving parts as, as anything you guys do, and how much effort has it taken to get to the point where you are, where it's working pretty well. Yeah, our guys have done a great job. I feel like we've done a um, a great job of, of repping it in practice and then taking that practice and, and carrying it over to the games. Our guys are covering guys up. Our guys with the ball in their hands are, are making guys miss, outrunning people, and they've uh, paid off with some big gains for us. Is it one way to maybe scheme around some of the missing X plays when you're without some of your your speeder, speedier receivers? Uh, I mean, screens are kind of you know one of those things where it could be an X play or it could be you know, a gain of 
two. You know, you don't really know when you call it. Obviously, you're hoping to uh, to get behind the rush and cover up the second level, let your guys get in space and um, and take advantage of it. But uh, you never really know until it, until it happens in the game. When you see guys get that franchise sticker placed on them, like, like you have it, there's an expectation, right, to elevate everyone else's game. Like, how do you uh, approach that? And are there things that you could do possibly to help elevate everybody's game around you? Yeah, no doubt. I mean, it's part of being a leader. It's part of being a quarterback is, is um, you know, driving the train, so to speak, you know, pushing, pushing the guys around you, whether it be in walkthrough, whether it be in practice, uh, making sure the energy there, the effort's there, uh, pushing the tempo, making sure I'm communicating, uh, elevating, trying to motivate. You know, it all goes into it. Go for a second from an ability standpoint, what does he give the offense if he is able to, to play this week? Yeah, no, obviously he's a, he's a rare talent that, that uh, has done it at a high level for a very long time. So um, a guy with his speed, his size, his range can definitely make plays, which he's shown for us at times this year. And uh, hopefully we can get him back and, and get him going again. Back, Ryan, at, at you know, clips of, of the past few games or whatever, do you think you're taking any more chances than – than you had in the past, or you know, does that maybe contribute to some of the turnovers? Or what's what's your what are your thoughts? Um, like I mentioned before, every everyone has a story, you know. Um, but at the end of the day, we all have to be on the same page, and I have to be accurate with the football and make good decisions. So um, that's my charge going forward, and I look forward to it. Right, how much improvement have you seen from uh, Jay Bill's defense since the first time you guys played them? They're they're playing well, you know. You see. A lot of improvement. Their, their secondary is, is disguising, doing a really good job of that. Um, up front, you know, they have talent and, and they're getting on the quarterback. They have speed um, and length, which can make it tough on the offensive line. Their backers are flying around, making plays. So I have a ton of respect for the way they're playing right now. It's going to be a good challenge for us. Do you have any sense for why you guys have been so so productive in the second quarter? I think you've scored 43% of all your points then. Have you settled in and adjusted to what a defense is doing maybe at that point? Or? And you like to get off to a fast start. You know, that's something that, that we talk about and, and want to do. Um, but occasionally in games, it, it takes a little while to kind of settle in and, and get going a little bit. So, you know, you get into the, the meat of the game there, and you really want to be able to, to move the ball consistently. Um, if you can pair that with a fast start, then you're going to be in really good shape. Confidence level grown with Foreman and Hilliard, the way that they've uh, run the ball the last week or so. Yeah, going back to the New England game, both of those guys ran the ball extremely well. You know, uh, getting tough yards, finishing, driving their feet through contact. Um, there's a couple runs where there's contact at the line of scrimmage or or no real hole for them to run through, but they're able to lower their pads, drive their feet, um, get some leverage, and then with the O line finishing behind them, you know, a, a one yard run turns into a, a five yard run. And if you're able to do that consistently, you know, you keep yourself ahead of the chains and and in good position to to extend drives. A good red zone target like you've had with AJ over the years and, and with Janu last year as well? Uh, I think the red zone comes down to, to timing and, and trust and uh, getting yourself open. You know, those, those three things. Uh, spaces are, are tighter, uh, the windows are tighter, and uh, so the trust has to really be there from the quarterback. The ability to, to get open quickly has got to be there from the, the receiver or, or pass catcher. And um, when you put those things together, you can have a, a beautiful thing. One of the things that maybe if you're if you're playing with receivers, you know, not as much time with them as a guy like an AJ or John. That's maybe one of the things that that could get affected is, is red zone with timing and so forth. I mean, it could be, no doubt, you know. But um, I do have have reps with a bunch of these guys, and I have a lot of trust because I've seen them do it. You know, maybe I haven't had it lately, or um, they haven't been in the starting lineup for for very long, but. Uh, have built up some of those reps over time and seen them make those plays, uh, not only with myself, but with other guys in practice. So that definitely elevates the trust. You maybe that's been a challenge this year, personally, just with your game over the years. You probably haven't played with maybe this many guys rotating in and out throughout a season. And I would guess that building that trust is a challenge at, at some point when you have that many guys coming through. Yeah, no, no, it's, it's a challenge. Um, it's not an ideal situation. You know, our team, I don't know what our number is up to right now with the number of guys that, that we've had play for us. Uh, but it's a testament to the resiliency of this team and um, the way that, that the mindset is and, and variable, you know, starts it from the top is no matter who's in there, take advantage of your opportunity, go make plays, and we'll find a way to win. You doing, uh, my calls, my cleats, and if so, what's, what's your calls and why? 
Yeah, my cause this year is, uh, is Life Water. I've supported them in the past. It's an organization that uh, provides clean water sources to villages over in Africa, um, and they do a great job. So it's an honor to work with them, and uh, excited to be wearing their cleats.